I love shooty bang bang games, more commonly known as light gun games, from Time Crisis to other ones. The games we just don't see anymore for technical reasons I'm too dumb to understand or care about. But I miss them, I know that much. And so when I got out my light gun, one game I really wanted to play that I never got the chance to play in my youth was a game which I think is a largely forgotten PS1 exclusive sequel to the original Time Crisis game. Time Crisis Project Titan. You again play as Richard Miller, the Tom Cruise-esque protagonist, and he's in a spot of bother. Why? Well, because he's been framed for the public assassination of the Caruban president, Xavier Serrano who was publicly shot by someone dressed like him. Now Richard knows it wasn't him, as he was busy watching it on an old TV, but no one else seems to believe him, and now he's got 48 hours to prove his innocence. So it all starts off with you parachuting on board a boat, in order to try and locate an undercover agent known as Abacus, who apparently can help Richard clear his name. And I love the fact that he goes about proving he didn't murder someone by murdering everyone who stands in his way. It's perfect 90s action and I love it, released in 2001. Now what you're seeing on screen right now is when I played the game with a controller and it's by far not the best way I would recommend playing Time Crisis Project Titan, but it is how I was best able to capture footage. Because this is the footage that I captured using the actual light gun. Yeah, I'm sorry it doesn't look that great, but that's 50 Hertz CRT TVs and modern day camcorders for you. So yeah, an old school way of capturing footage but for those who don't know, you can't use a modern TV with a light gun for technical reasons that I'm too lazy to research and then pretend I understand. I only have this little 14 inch CRT TV, but it's still great for playing games like this. And believe me, this game is a lot of fun. You can use a light gun like the G-Con, also known as the Gun Con outside of Europe, and I do feel it's a lot more accurate than the other light gun that I have. It has your standard trigger for the shooty shooty bits, and a couple of buttons on the side, which can be used to reload or put yourself in and out of cover. However, I prefer to use a second controller on the floor, which I control with my foot. Just like the pedal in arcades, but now your controllers smell of your feet. At the beginning of the game, you're introduced to some of the main characters and antagonists, including Soldier Guy with a wrench, white-haired dual-wielding Zoolander, who I first thought was a mermaid, and Gun Arm Wild Dog the big baddie. Thank you, Zeus Starling. I see you finally found her. We've been reading your email, Marissa, and you've been a very, very naughty girl. Anyway, the blue-haired mermaid, who I'm weirdly attracted to, has undercovered the undercover abacus and thrown her into a room until she's learned her lesson. So arriving on the boat, you need to murder your way through all the goons to prove that you didn't do the one murder. Anyway, you have to kill them with nothing but a pistol. But don't worry, you have unlimited ammo. But then again, you also have limited time. You'll need quick reflexes to shoot your way through waves of enemies who will happily jump out at you in a variety of ways. Now for this recording, I soon realized that using a controller wasn't going to cut it for me, as I absolutely sucked using the controller. So you might notice I did a bit of cheating. I played it through with a light gun, so I don't care but it did mean that I didn't have to worry about reloading and could happily shoot away until everyone on the screen was dead without having to worry about the time limit, getting shot and losing lives. Oh, and just to say that all the footage was recorded with original hardware, I was just able to upscale the footage of the PlayStation with my OSSC. So yeah, some people will jump out at you with handguns, some will just throw stuff at you, and some will shoot rockets. Oh, and some might even have machine guns. So you'll need to be cautious and hide in cover unless you want to get shot or exploded with a rocket. You could technically stay in hiding, like when I used to hide from my mum because I'd been stealing all the biscuits, but if you're not careful, you'll run out of time and then it's game over. Luckily, you don't have to worry about that if you're using cheats. Shooting certain people will give you a bit more time and shooting certain things will often give you more lives, which is always handy. There's a lot of people to shoot so you can rack up the body count until you eventually get to one of the bosses. One of my favourite bits in the first level is getting to the chef. No, no, no. He doesn't seem very happy that you've arrived without a reservation, so we'll throw knives at you. You can shoot the knives out of midair, which is pretty cool, although it took me a bit of practice to get good at that bit. So shoot him when he pops up, and eventually you can completely empty your load into him. Although I was a little bit disappointed that Miller doesn't say something cool like, I don't know, check please, but better than that after finishing him off. 
Eventually, you will shoot your way to the soldier guy, who has upgraded his wrench for a machine gun. One cool thing in this game is that you can move whilst in cover at certain points and try to get a better angle at certain enemies. But this cheeky so-and-so is too scared to 1v1 Miller, so has other enemies helping him out. Once you've defeated this boss, you'll get this hilarious cutscene. I don't know why I find it so funny, I just do. So anyway, you escort the spy, Abacus, or whatever her name is, off the boat, and the mermaid that I fancy for some reason finds it funny. <laughs> anyway, Abacus spy girl person has told you where you can confront the real killer, who happens to be called Richard Blanco. <laughs> and he's in Caruba, which is not in any way, shape or form, obviously Cuba. So Mina hops on a plane, and for some reason, all the baddies are already waiting for him as the plane lands. I have no idea how they know he's on this specific flight, but it does give Richard more excuses to murder people in his quest for innocence. So you shoot up an entire army at an airport, which is always going to be fun, and if you're lucky, sometimes they even take out themselves. But there's no complaints here because it's actually fun doing all the murders in this game. No matter where they jump out at you, you can just shoot them in the balls, or in the head, or in the balls and then their head, so they drop quicker than Sega dropped the Dreamcast. After shooting up everyone in the airport and then going through security, you meet up with a cab driver who's kind enough to pick you up just as you're getting shot at. So the plan is he's going to take you to Blanco's mansion so you can confront him over impersonating you. And by confront him, I mean with bullets. Anyway, this cutscene happens with the cab driver, which is just hilarious. Hopefully you will not kill our president at this time, eh? <laughs> so yeah, he takes you to Blanco's mansion, but the murdering people bit gets a bit harder as the difficulty starts to ramp up a little bit. So after shooting your way through another small army, you meet up with fake Richard Miller, Ricardo Blanco. And you can again use this new system of moving whilst in cover to shoot up Blanco when he least expects it. So after emptying your load into Blanco, he tries to get away whilst clearly in pain. Lucky for him, it seems like the big daddy wild dog or whatever he's called, arrives in a helicopter. And then we get another cutscene which I just think is hilarious. In our game. <laughs> I'll kill you all! You're next, Miller! I love everything about it, from the fact that he laughs at Miller, to him then getting shot by his comrade, to Miller poking his little head out. It's perfect. Hilariously, Blanco then wants you to get revenge for him. Look. I'm not doing it for you, I'm doing it because I'm fed up with cab drivers making jokes at my expense. Hey, watch it. Anyway, in his last dying breath, he tells you where you can find Wild Dog, which is seemingly inside a trash can, it seems. So on this secret trash can hidden base, you do your thing as Richard Miller and blast your way through the population of another small country. You also need to be a lot more speedy and precise now, as the enemies are a lot more accurate than before and there's so many of them, you'll need to be efficient with your shots or you'll run out of time. Unless, of course, you cheat like me. I do like the way this game introduces hazards. Someone will usually get messed up to let you know that you might want to avoid the big hook thing swinging towards your head. Otherwise, I'd have had no idea. Also, I don't know who's actually shouting danger at you, but it is much appreciated. So yeah, you just keep firing away at people with no remorse, but the truth is what's important here. And eventually you face off against this absolute death machine. And I didn't find it easier when playing without cheats, so you do need to make sure you're moving about whilst in cover. And once you've dealt with the death machine, you get another cool cutscene where you soon bump into, and you won't believe this, the Caruban president, who wasn't dead after all. I'm just as surprised as you are. Yeah, so he's just as surprised as you are that he's not dead. Though you'd have thought that he'd have realised that by now. Also, he tells you that he's a hostage, but I didn't think that hostages would usually be equipped with a gun. And it turns out that the country of Karuba just so happens to be rich in the very titanium resources that Wild Dog needs to build his robot army. Yes, he's building a robot army, so El Presidente says he will go and clear your name if you stop Wild Dog. Although, to be honest, it isn't really Miller's problem anymore, is it? And this is basically blackmail. But I guess Miller has the hungries that only murder can feel now. So he goes off in a speedboat to try and put a stop to Wild Dog's plans with bullets. 
Upon getting up to wherever it is that Wild Dog is, there's more shooting up than in the entirety of train spotting. It's still fun though, there's not much more you can say about shooting a lot of people. Lots and lots of shooting and more shooting until eventually we get to Wild Dog. And he seems happy you're there. How nice of you to join us. He unleashes a couple of his robots on you, as well as some other cannon fodder. And after finishing off the robots with your small weapon, you eventually catch up to Wild Dog, who, like everyone else, is too scared to 1v1 you, and again gets humans and even robots to help him out, whilst he constantly hides so much that he should be called Scaredy Dog. <laughs> but eventually you empty your load into Wild Dog enough so that he gives up, except he doesn't. Wild Dog activates his robot army and tries to escape on a helicopter whilst Miller is distracted. But Richard Miller is done with all this, and so he fires off a couple of good shots to deal with Wild Dog once and for all. As fortuitously, his helicopter lands on the robots, exploding in a large ball of flames. And I was hoping that Richard Miller would say something like, that takes care of the cremation. But he doesn't seem like that kind of guy. He's clearly a better person than me. Despite all the murder. In fact, Miller is so cool that he doesn't even bother to turn up to his own award ceremony, because he'd rather be out having a nice drive. And that's Project Titan. It's fun, funny, and full of action. Oh, and quite challenging, if you don't use cheats. There wasn't another Time Crisis game on PS1 after this, and I don't think Richard Miller is in any of the other Time Crisis games. I like to think that he drove off in a stolen car and is still driving it today. Or maybe he crashed it and that's why no one's heard of him since. It was a lot of fun to get back to playing some light gun games and I've played a few others recently and so I'm sure I'll talk about those at some point too. If you do fancy playing some yourself then I would say that I completely forgot how exhausted your arm can get. Well, not your arm, my arm, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye! Hopefully you will not kill our president this time, eh? <laughs> I am, um, shall we say, a friend of mine. <laughs>